Hey everybody, Mike Diller here. Welcome uh, back to our seven part training series. We are on video number five today. And this is where we're gonna change gears. And today we're gonna be making that transition from building your business to investing and building your wealth. So as I stated in video number one, one of the biggest mistakes that I made in my career is that I set the wrong goal for myself. Instead of creating a goal that would result in financial freedom, I simply created a goal to make money. Now, because of my lack of experience, I assumed that once you made money, financial freedom was automatically included in that package. Well, I can tell you right now that that is not the case. So what I want to do here today is to set you on the path to actual real financial freedom and share some of the lessons learned with you, uh, you know, that I've acquired that will hopefully prevent you from making the same mistakes that I did. Now, one of the first things that I want you to understand is that it's not how much money your business makes but how much you keep, okay? So write this down. It's not what you make, it's what you keep. And ironically, keeping your money as an entrepreneur can prove to be uh, even more difficult than making it because of our you know, really shared personality traits and type. Not all, but most entrepreneurs are wired in a very similar way. And one of the things that most of us have in common is a very high level of what's called quick start. So your level of quick start is one of four factors measured in the Colby A index, which is one of the most popular and widely used benchmark tests that you can use to learn about yourself and your particular hires. So this is something that we have all of our people that we're interviewing to hire go through uh, to learn how their brain works. And it's called, if you want to take this for yourself, I would highly recommend it. It is the Colby A index. So I believe that's colby.com or colbytest.com. Uh, you'll easily be able to find it in Google. Uh, but basically, Colby scores you on a scale of 1 to 10 in four different categories. And most entrepreneurs have a quick start score of 8 or higher, which is why we're very comfortable making quick, decisive decisions, taking immediate action uh, you know, on an idea that we have or an assignment, even if we don't have all of the details. On the other hand, people with a low quick start need to know everything about an assignment or a task before they'll feel comfortable taking action. Now, in addition to a high quick start, most entrepreneurs are also very comfortable with taking risks. Well, think about that for a second. If you take somebody with a high quick start who will jump into anything very quickly without all the information or details, um, and who's also very comfortable taking risks, and then you tell them to go invest their money, the outcome is not going to be very pretty. Uh, they are working against themselves, and, and you uh, essentially become your own worst enemy at that point. So. Uh, once I figured this out and learned you know, about myself in this way, I was able to create an investing strategy that would address these weaknesses and then cater to my strengths. And so the solution was pretty simple. I took myself out of the equation. You know, I got rid of the problem. <laughs> and I'll show you the first way that I did that here in just a second. Um, but as your business continues to grow and your revenues continue to grow, and ideally your income with it, the first thing that you want to do is create a solid financial foundation. You want to put yourself in a place of financial security because there's always risks when you're building a business. Your sales could drop, you could get sued, uh, your key you know, marketing uh, team or employee could leave and go somewhere else or quit, you could get divorced, what, whatever it may be, uh, there are landmines everywhere. So. Uh, this really is considered money that you cannot lose, which means it can't be in the stock market and it can't be in a simple savings or money market account either because inflation can eat that away and that can be taken away during a lawsuit, litigation, divorce, whatever it may be. There's no asset protection component of money uh, that's in a simple savings or bank account. So what do you do? Well, the first thing that I learned uh, as I began to study how wealthy people invest is that they use a very different strategy to save money than everybody else. And while the average person uh, you know, does the savings account thing uh, over at their bank, most of which are paying less than 1% interest on you know, uh, these days, the rich do something that I call cash flow banking or what the government would call a 770 account. So put that up here for you. Am I dyslexia? 
seems to kick in only when I'm writing on a whiteboard. So chances are extremely high that neither you nor your financial advisor have ever heard about this because uh, the federal government actually prevents the companies involved in this financial strategy uh, from even marketing it. Yet some of the most wealthy and powerful people and companies in the world uh, have used it for over a century. That includes Walt Disney, J.C. Penney, Ray Kroc from McDonald's, the Rothschilds family, the Rockefeller family, uh, President JFK, President Roosevelt, and dozens of others. Now, the good news is that you don't need to be rich to use it, all right? So in fact, I could have benefited from this strategy back when I was waiting tables. And yet, less than 0.07% of Americans actually take advantage of this type of an account, so less than 1%. So every single month, money is automatically drafted out of my checking account and transferred into my cash flow banking account. And the word automatically here is really one of the biggest keys. So whether I thought about it or not, that money was invested every 30 days, which meant that every 30 days I grew a little bit richer. So think about that. Every 30 days, without my involvement, I was guaranteed to grow a little bit richer. Very important piece of this puzzle, all right? So creating this process is what allowed me to build wealth in a completely hands-free, automated fashion on a monthly basis for the very first time in my life. Because if I had if been dependent, if this had been dependent upon me having to make that transfer from checking to my cash flow banking account, very good chance that would not have happened. I would have forgotten about it. I would have found another use for the money. I just would not have had the discipline to do that every 30 days. So the fact that it's out of my hands and I've removed myself from the equation is the biggest reason why it's been so successful for me. So here's some of the things that this particular strategy can do for you and why it's used by some of the most wealthy people and companies on the planet. First and foremost, it can provide you with an average return of about 5% a year, which at this point is about 500% more than a savings account uh, that's you know, producing a 1% return. Um, and the neat part about it though, what's really most important in my mind is that it does that without any risk to the principal, without any risk to the money that you're actually putting in there. Um, because it's not exposed to the stock market. So even if the stock market drops, you know, like it did in 2008 and drops 40, 50%, you're not going to lose a dime. It's just going to sit there and continue to earn interest. Uh, and the next big piece of the puzzle is that it can't be frozen or seized during uh, a banking crisis or during a lawsuit or during a divorce, uh, depending upon, you know, the details of how you structured your account. Uh, but basically it has asset protection qualities that don't come with any other type of account that you would get from a bank, all right? And this is not a part of the banking system. And in fact, this is why people in the banking industry like JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs keep billions, literally billions of dollars in their own money in this type of account. This is a part of their foundational strategy. Uh, the next component that is really interesting is that unlike a 401k, it enables you to access your money whenever you want without penalty. Uh, in most states, it provides protection, uh, again, against creditors, so you'll never have to worry about losing your retirement nest egg or losing that foundation due to an unexpected lawsuit or bankruptcy or divorce, whatever it may be. Unlike a 401k or an IRA, there's no limit to how much you can invest. So as your business starts to produce more money, you make more income, uh, you can continue to scale with this strategy as your financial position continues to scale. Uh, you can also use this to really become your own bank, which is why we call it cash flow banking, so that you can actually buy your home, your cars, and make other investments, which is what I do, using the money in that account uh, in the form of a loan. So you're not actually taking the money out and making an investment like you would uh, with a savings account. The money continues to sit there in your cash flow banking account. You're earning 5% interest on it. You can then take a loan out against that pile of money, go invest it in an apartment complex or something else like that, that makes even more interest. And so now you've got the same amount of money in two different places earning interest for you, uh, you know, in two different investments, uh, which is awesome. It's a nice little piece of leverage that you get to take advantage of. But the cherry on top to all of this uh, is that it allows you to pull out 100% of your money in this cash flow banking account whenever you decide to retire 100% tax free. So you pay no taxes on that big nest egg that has been growing ideally for decades when you decide to take that money out and nobody has a say when, when you can do it or how much you can take out. It's completely up to you. You have all the freedom that you want. So the whole point of 
you know, my personal interest in implementing this strategy uh, is this. Even if this were the only investment that I ever made, that's all I ever did, um, or if I made other investments and they all went south and they all lost all of the, you know, the money that I put into them, this single strategy is on track to pay me $100,000 per month every single month, again, from the age of 60 to 100. So I can totally screw up everything, but because this is automated, it's out of my hands, I can't mess it up, um, you know, the money continues to be put into there every single month, the market can't crash and erase it from me, I can't be sued, have it taken away from me, whatever, I, you know, whatever happens, I have a foundation, I have a nest egg uh, that will be waiting for me there as a safety net and it's one that's going to provide an amazing lifestyle for me. So if you want to learn more about this strategy, the best person that I found in the industry when it comes to setting up these types of accounts is Patrick Donahoe at cashflowbanking.com. I don't get anything for recommending him uh, to you guys. He's just become a great friend and uh, in my opinion, he's the most knowledgeable expert uh, in the industry when it comes to this strategy and setting up these types of accounts. And he loves working with entrepreneurs. Uh, you know, we've sent him hundreds, if not thousands, of people uh, through the Elevation Group over the last couple of years, and he's just a stand-up human being. So, if you want to check that out, you know, go look up Patrick over at CashflowBanking.com, and you'll have an opportunity to give him a ring and learn as much about this strategy as you want. So now that you've got a rock solid financial foundation in place, what's the next step? Well, now it's time to start turning your income into actual wealth and then to turn that wealth into freedom, financial freedom. So rather than investing for retirement, one of the biggest lessons that I've learned as I've acquired knowledge and experience in this arena over the past few years is that the rich invest in cash flow assets that create freedom. They don't invest in retirement, they invest in assets that create freedom, which is ultimately what I believe we as entrepreneurs value most, is the ability to do what we want, when we want, with who we want. So if you've ever read any of Robert Kiyosaki's uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad books, you know that he's obviously a big fan of investing in things like apartment complexes and oil wells because both of these assets do two things. They produce monthly cash flow and they reduce your taxes. So that's what I did as well. And in part number six, I'm going to actually walk you through some of the actual investments that I've made just like uh, this building here, which is uh, one of the first apartment complexes I ever invested in. And I'm going to tell you how they did and how you can really pursue this strategy as well as you continue down your road to financial freedom. So stay tuned for part number six. It's going to be absolutely amazing. We're going to go through some really cool numbers and show you uh, you know, how you can basically build an upward spiral of wealth uh, that will be life-changing for you. So thanks so much for your time today, and I'll see you tomorrow in part number six.